So it's kind of social studies project based. It seemed. It was a lot yeah. Of instruction back and forth about what to do. And she had yeah, a lot of good a big big project class. She had a lot of kind of good explanation and you know um, concept checking questions. I think her actual instructions seem quite clear. So for researching kind of different countries and what they have to do. And it, you could tell a lot of planning went into it at least because there's a lot to cover. Yeah, I agree. It seemed like a big in-depth project. It seemed like she'd really thought through all the steps and uh, had broken up the class around all the steps in a good way, I thought. So I think the introduction was kind of quick. She just came in and said, good morning. They said, good morning. But yeah, no activity. Yeah, I thought that was... Yeah, that was my big issue uh, with the start of the class. Uh, there was no routine. There was no real introduction. There was no warm up. There was no discussion of the rules, uh, which I think for this age level, you got to have a rules, a rules discussion. Uh, yeah, I agree. Actually, Any, even if that. even if they know the teacher very well and are kind of used to her, as they seem to be generally, but it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't hinder anything to just double check. I know we do this every lesson, but yeah, I'm not just supposed to very to be quickly in reinforce the rules. Groups. So as as it went on, I thought, like I said, her instructions were clear. But the problem, the main problem I had as well, was that it, it was very much teacher and group of students rather than bringing students up to demonstrate activities or how would you show me to do this, you know? So it was her giving instructions yeah. to them as a group the whole time, more or less. I think so. In terms of variety, I would definitely yeah. Do that. Yeah, I definitely, it was all just teacher, student, teacher, student, teacher, student uh, through every step. Yeah, like especially a topic, the topic was about uh, researching countries. I feel like there were a lot of possibilities for doing like a fun lead in with some media or a picture or something like this. There was a lot of room for students to have kind of their own discussions as she was giving the instructions, you know, to kind of get them into the topic actually that was that was another thing I, I had a note about is that there was no lead-in um to the discussion or, or to the to the topic uh she just walked in and was like okay we're researching countries and it's like could easily have done something about the food in vietnam or a celebration or something um that could have gotten the kids talking to them to each other and then you know excited about the the topic overall yeah, I, I was thinking yeah, in terms of a quick activity to lead into social studies, geography, or whatever. Yeah. Even something simple like uh, guess the flag, you know, um, quiz because it's still within yep. the topic. Yeah. Something real easy. That was a good opportunity to ask individual students and make sure if they knew something. I mean, she did ask a lot of good concept checking yeah. questions throughout anyway. But the thing is about that, there will always be one student amongst the big group who can who can answer. So it was good that she did the observations with yeah. the group afterwards. That was decent. Yeah. She had some check questions, but for all the instructions that there were, I thought there could have been more um, little check questions here and there. Yeah. And a different stage later when the students are talking about their activity and their project, you know, I think they went up in pairs. It turned out that she was the one asking them questions. I really think she could have taken a step back there and let the other students in the other groups ask them the questions. And then she would have been observing yeah. that on top of it. Yeah, there, there were just there were so many opportunities for her to just let them talk and have a little more autonomy in the class. But it, it was always just like her to student, her to student. She also she had uh, rules. Like she would occasionally pull up her dojo and reward a group. One was for, I saw once for inquiry, which I liked. That's a cool rule. Like, you know, encouraging them to ask questions. And then collaboration, like that's a little wishy-washy, but, you know, at least it's like a positive, uh, positive kind of rule. But like I said, it, it was so like, it was a little sporadic. Like she just would occasionally pull up dojo and it was like, oh, we hadn't even seen dojo. I yeah. really, uh, so it looked like she didn't, really go over these rules with them, like, and then didn't say our expectations at the end of the class, which is kind of good to reinforce behaviors and norms, like go over the rules, go over how they're going to be rewarded, what they're going to be rewarded for. Um, so yeah, I felt like she had that rules, she had those rules up, but then wasn't quite using them as, as much as she could have. I 
really right? Like I really like the start of the online lesson, the way she set up that she was doing something with. Yeah. Uh, she had them writing using their pens, being active basically, whilst she was taking mm-hmm. the register and checking technology, you know, something that not every student or teacher gets to do even before jumping into a class. So the fact that she could do that while they were working on writing, that was good. Yeah, I really like it. It's, it's definitely something I try to do with my little, little ones just to have something for them to immediately have their attention on when they come into the classroom. Um, And I like that she has it for the virtual environment too. Like it's just as important. Like they need to be like in their seats ready when she's ready to start. And then she can be doing her own checks, be getting attendance, be like taking care of things, but they'll have something fun to do. And just letting them draw, I think is great. It's just super like simple, like they enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely. Some kind of chilled out. It's something that was, yeah, probably, you know, transplanted, like you said, from a traditional class. And like we mentioned in the last class, technology can go wrong at any time. So she's really taking the onus on herself to say, I'm going to make sure that from my end, everything is okay. Yep. Make sure everything's working. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure everyone's got good sound and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I liked her energy overall too. Like she was really bright and positive and she was talking to students individually. And yeah, there, there was a lot of just addressing students by name. It felt like it was, it felt like a live classroom, even though it was virtual and, uh, I think that comes down to just like the teacher's demeanor, basically. She was Which good at keeping really good. track of the students that did or didn't answer later. So, you know, for the reading activity, when she yeah. had the higher learners working as helpers and the lower level working as readers. And then later she was sure that the, the higher level get to read another activity and the quiet students would volunteer next. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, uh, yeah, if we can jump to that, I, because having taught online, that's always the the issue is that only one person can really do something at a time, can talk or, uh, you know, be kind of productive. And the way she kind of broke it down with the the reader helper system, I thought was was very cool because it made a reading activity kind of a little more, that, that could be super boring. They're just sitting there reading, but it made it a lot more like kind of engaging. And then, you know, there was teamwork and, and that kind of thing. And it's a grammatically based lesson as well, which isn't always the easiest one to teach. She went over her rules in the beginning, right? Yeah, she went over her rules. Yeah. So she had a she had a nice structured introduction where they were they were first doing a warmer, and then they did the quiz, and the quiz was very cool, just like kind of checking in with each student. And then she went over the rules, and then she jumped to the actual like lesson. So, yeah, so she yeah, color coding. It felt, like, even it felt like a much more structured. Yeah, definitely. She even had color coding to say what she was meaning to convey throughout about, you know, these are the norms, these yeah. are the expectations. Broken up very well, I think. She was also good at using uh, kind of online tools to assist students. Um, it just, it seemed like she had kind of transitioned well to this virtual environment. Like she was using all the underlining tools and like, um, like was just very good about keeping students kind of focused in the right right stuff using what she has for online kind of your I think, overall thoughts yeah i think overall the same. we seem uh-huh. to be on the same page with the online lesson that it was quite strong and she managed a lot of things that are difficult to accomplish in an online setting and good procedures good rules yep. good register uh, good balance of activities and individual and group as well yep. all managed well and uh, the traditional lesson, I think we both had similar problems. I think about the variety was lacking a bit. It was kind yeah. of teacher to group of students. So a lot of activities could have been broken up a bit yeah. more. Like I just thought overall the online lesson just showed kind of all the structure and sort of variety of interaction that a that a, a traditional classroom should have. But then the traditional classroom, which you know, should have those things was lacking them. Uh, you know, it was structured well, but you know, like, like you said, like not a lot of interaction between students, a lot of kind of issues with getting the instructions across and getting the project kind of into the students' hands. So 